Hello once again and thank you for joining me for another inbox kit review and today we've got something very very special we have got the Battle of the Seaplanes this is the World War One wingnut wings so you know it's going to be amazing it's the Duelists it's a battle of two seaplanes which took place on the 31st of July 1918 uh, these two aircraft, there's actually real photographs included um, from this incident which is now depicted on the, the box art, which is a huge box and this is a very, very valuable kit and rare, okay, so I'm going to be very careful. So we have here the most lovely uh, box art on the front and it's basically the Duelists R, the Felix Stowe F2A which is a huge seaplane uh, based on a Curtis design and you'll actually see that I think as you look at these uh, the details of the kit. It reminds me of an early version of a Catalina in the World War II. It's got very similar design elements to it. Anyway, we'll come to that later. It's deadly foe and Nemesis is the Hansa Brandenburg W29. A most unusual uh, style of aircraft as you can see from its sort of design. It's almost like a, an upturned banana. It's got a rudder that's underneath not above, almost like a rudder on a ship. Um, so it's got some interesting aerodynamics and uh, from all accounts seems to be quite an effective plane. So this is something you, you're going to enjoy. So. Buckle up, we're going in. Let's have a look. So, I'll give you a bit of blurb off the side, first of all. So, it says Felix Doe, the big one, uh, the British seaplane, was a, probably the most successful flying boat of the First World War. Had a crew of five. A crew of five. So, it had a gunner at the back, a gunner at the front. I think it had a navigator and pilot and co pilot, I think. So, it's quite a big old aircraft. It's, um, yeah, a forerunner of things to come in the future, really. It could carry out long-range reconnaissance, anti-submarine and anti-shipping patrols. And of course the U-boats were running, the, the first U-boats, World War One, were very effective machines and were causing real problems for, for the UK. So obviously this was quite an important uh, strategic aircraft to be able to try and tackle that threat. It says here, um, it was essentially an Anglo-American design which can trace its development back to the pre-war Glenn Curtis. Ah, there you go. And Cyril Port design with 180 horsepower twin engine American flying boat designs. That explains it. The basic design was improved and strengthened successfully by both Curtis and Port now having returned to service with the Royal Naval Air Force after the outbreak of the war. Over the next five, sorry, over the next few years until July 1917 when Port arrived at the arrived at the deep V hull with the full side fins so characteristic of this Felix Dale flying boat. The side fins on the wing are very strange looking design you know. We'll get into that later. But basically it says um, um, they were basically developed at the experimental station at Felix Dale in Suffolk and hence became known as the Felix Dale. Um, Although technically now a holy port design, these flying boats are referred to as an American class by the Royal Navy and as Kurdish types by the Germans. <laughs> a modified Liberty engine powered version was manufactured by Curtis in America as the H-16. On July the 31st, 1918, this one took off from Great Yarmouth on a routine patrol and was in disengagement with the Brandenburg. More on that later. Going over to the German side, the Brandenburg. Hansa Brandenburg W29. Um, this was an Ernst Heinkel design and allegedly was designed by him on the back of a cabaret wine list while he was out having a few bevies. <laughs> it says a lot about how talented he must have been that he could do that. Okay. It was essentially a Brandenburg W12 biplane design with the top wing removed. Oh yes, okay, that explains it. Yep. The advanced monoplane design with improved performance due to the reduction in drag offered by the 50% reduction in the wings is achievable because of the highly rigid nature of the boat and strut arrangement. Hmm, it does look rigid, doesn't it? The W29 was a worthy successor to the W12, its task of patrolling the North Sea and harassing the flying boats of the Royal Naval Air Service. These surface British it's also attacked British surface vessels and ships of all types. They built in two versions and was equipped with three machine guns, two machine guns and a wireless equipment on one version, 
and the other version of the W29 was powered with three different types of engines during its production. 150 brake horsepower Benz, 185 brake horsepower BMW, and 185 horsepower Benz also. The majority of these were powered by the 150 horsepower Benz as depicted in our kit set. The advanced nature of the W29 is sure that it had a lengthy post-war service with the Dutch Luft Riedel German air carrier and Norway as well as being licensed and built in Denmark and Japan. On the 31st of July 1918 Friedrich Christiansen was leading a patrol of five aircraft from 1C Staffel in Hans in Hans Brandenburg W29s when they encountered the Felix Stowe. Right, enough of the spiel, let's get into it. Now this is an absolute monster and it is worth, I promise you, it's worth an absolute fortune which we'll talk about later. But let's have a look at the kit. I'm going to remove the top and gently put it over there because <coughs> it's big and it will get in the way otherwise. It's alright, it's on the carpet, so I won't get scratched or anything. Now, one thing to note, that obviously wing nut wings, we've talked about this before, they don't exist anymore, so this is going to become super rare. Its value is going to shoot up and keep on shooting up, so we have to be very careful. We're not going to be opening any bags, but the nice thing about this one is that these later and more expensive kits from wing nut wings have got... Uh, the plastic might be different. They did, they did use, I think, more than one manufacturer in China. They actually injection moulds it for them, or did. But these have got these lovely clear bags so we can actually see the parts here much better than the, the other kits. So I shall move the box carefully over there. It's so big. <laughs> and we will. Is that in the way? I'm only when I zoom you in. I'll zoom you in. Um, going to see if I can actually retrieve the instructions and look at that first because it might make more sense I think that's a good idea. Oh wow it's massive. Jeez that's, I, I buy magazines that are not as thick as this. That's great. Let's come, come in close. Okay. Slowly slowly catchy monkey. It's my lens. It takes its time I tell you. <laughs> right. So, uh, da, 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 give you a little bit more history. Um, upper rib surface tapes are invisible in the photographs. Uh, available to us now. We are now of the opinion, there's a lot of this in World War I about colours and things. It's really hard to be absolutely sure, certain what colours things are. It says, we are of the opinion that the hexagon camouflage, hexagon camouflage that is on the Hansa Brandenburg seaplane was painted and not printed onto the fabric as previously thought. Gosh, still finding out facts about it to this day. So, this is going to be a big one, so um, here we go. Shows all of the sprue trees, first of all, so the Hansa Brandenburg, and that's what we're going to start with. So, secondly, it shows the sprue trees for the Felix Stowe, and of course, that's a monster of a uh, of a model it's going to be big so you want to build this one you better have a big cabinet I would say so Hansa Brandenburg here we go so you start off building the central section and then installing the seat and the auxiliary fuel tank then you build the side sections of the framework around the pilot then we've got pilot seat belts and uh, yeah, controlled column, which is just like a big steering wheel, really. Now we've got this photo, and here we go, one of the first photographs. I'm going to bring you right in on this one. So we've got this photo of the Brandenburg attacking the Felix Tell on the water. And they say, after strapping, after a strapping run, if you look closely, you can see the crewman clinging to the starboard wing rear strut. Oh yes, here. Can we see that? That's the that's the crew. One well, of the crew has jumped out and he's along the on the wing, and he's hanging on to grim death. Gosh, that's remarkable. I guess it was one of the Germans that was taking these photographs. But that's a great photo, isn't it? Then, I need to go out even more, 
I'm going to be doing a lot of zooming in and out I think with this kit. <laughs> okay so then we have the interior rigging guide and there's quite a lot of complex rigging I think on this one. Painting guide which is I love the way wing, wings do this they always show you the colours and gives you a really good idea of what the finished uh, componentry looks like when it's in place. And then we've got the engine bay and fuselage, uh, Bosch starting magneto, empty belt container for the machine guns, Spandau magazines, wow, paint interior, oh you must paint the interior, okay. Uh, empty shell chutes, it's quite a sophisticated system around the guns, it looks very cleverly integrated, in fact if you look here, uh, you can see, just look at that. They've sort of kind of built the guns into the side of the aircraft. That's remarkable. So hence they've got all these chutes and things. It's quite a well packaged system, isn't it? Uh-huh. Okay. And then we move on to the engine. So, starting with the sump. Which I now recognise to be the sump, but I don't think it's a cam cover anymore like I used to. <laughs> And you're building up your crankcase, carburetor intake, manifold, cylinders go on, magneto at the front, and then there's some illustrations of the Benz engine. Many useful details for the modeler, yes indeed, you can't get too much detail. Never. So then we've got the radiator assembly and the windshield going in. Radiator again is very, very neatly packaged into the front there, isn't it? See that? That's really good. And then we have the uh, oh Christensen's good luck statue. Statue? Well, well, well. <laughs> it's got some very interesting features on this plane, I've got to say. Then you're building up your Spandau machine guns and they look really nice and it's using PE, so that's gonna look great. Fantastic. And you've got this again, this packaging and the guns. You've got the empty belt chute for the uh, for the for the belt side that comes out once the bullets and the shells have been expended. Fuselage. You've got to drill the ends off the exhaust if you want to have them more open. It says. Gosh. Okay. Uh, and then you've got this very very bizarre design of tailplane that I mentioned at the beginning. So you've got this tailplane with the rudder which hangs underneath, it's like the rudder of a ship. So it's very interesting. Apply your camouflage decals over gloss, not just clear coated, but gloss painted. Okay. I think they're worried about the conformability of your decals, that's what they're alluding to. Then we've got the, uh, the actual floats, and they're big ones aren't they for such a modest aircraft. They're massive, like two boats. <laughs> and then we've got the struts going underneath and uh, a little bit of uh, detail around the struts. And a photo of the plane. Now then, there's an interesting one. We have got here IMG 114.47 Parabellum. Sorry, 1470 Parabellum. And it's got a huge ammunition belt drum at the side. That's a heck of a machine gun, isn't it? For World War One, especially, that's a wicked looking weapon. Holy moly. And then we've got the support trestles, which is really nice touch. That looks really lovely. And the wheels, or beaching dollies as they call them. That's fantastic. Some really clever touches in this, I've got to say. Front trestles to support the uh, the floats when it's on land. Awesome. Then, whoops, some pictures of the uh, the rigging, and thankfully on this plane there's very little of it, so that's a real blessing, I'd say. <laughs> and then we've got combat report of this incident. Uh, complete with photographs. 
says the photos were taken shortly after the landing of the burning and shot down Curtis boat, or Phoenix down as we call it. Fuel tanks are exploding in image 2216. Okay, which is this, this photo here. And it says, the fuel tanks are exploding and so does the ammunition at about the same time. The big bright flames are highly visible. Some members of the crew jump overboard. One man is sitting on the outer end of the lower starboard wing. Gosh. The wings of the boat start to burn and the whole boat is burned up in no time. This photo shows the type of construction of the fuselage control surface and the position of the wings in relation to the fuselage. What remarkable photographs they really are. Anyway, you'll see more of that, I think, in a little bit later in the instructions. I think there were some close-ups. So, the paint scheme. Well, that's uh, really nice. It's pale grey and, again, some mighty big crosses. Takes up the whole wing across to us, right across the cord. Um, imposing looking thing, isn't it? Remarkable. And again, typical wingnut wings, some absolutely fantastic photographs. Tons of detail. It says here they're just manoeuvring it on its beach dollies to go into the water. It's, from all accounts, it looks like quite a formidable aeroplane for its time. And then we start on the Felix Tail. Uh, is it worth it? It's going to end up shot to pieces. But anyway, <laughs> hopefully this one won't be. Hmm. You can see here it's got front cockpit. So you start off with a wireless aerial wheel, and then you build up the uh, the wireless cabinet, and then the floorboards, floorboards, and then we've got the uh, control column or steering wheel, as I would call it. <laughs> and the instrumentation, instrument board. And then we've got the petrol tanks, which just literally look like, gosh, they just look like petrol drums, don't they, really? Look at that. Just looks like petrol drums with a, a feeder tube in it. Scary. And more of them, several of them. Some go vertical, some go horizontal. Clearly it needed quite a lot of fuel. And then you've got building up the floor. And we've got the Lewis guns, side armament, side Lewis armament, so they've got several guns on board obviously, and then you're building up the side of the actual fuselage frame, then we've got the, um, again look at the detail here on this, just going back to the more work on top of the fuel tanks, which as I say look like oil drums, but for want of a better description. And then you're building up the uh, control wheels. And then a nice cool illustration about what this should all look like. I'm going to zoom you out. Better if I did. There we go. Cool illustration of the actual uh, appearance, including those massive fuel tanks. And then the rigging. Mm, internal rigging. There's going to be a lot of this, I think. That's quite uh, challenging, I suspect. And then we have the hull. Now this is a big, big, big flying boat, so it's a, it's a fair old size, this hull. It does remind me of the Catalina a lot, I've got to say. <coughs> Excuse me, obviously that's where the design uh, influence came from later, from this. And building up the co cockpit sides and then putting the top on. And then the hull steps, the tail skid. It's a remarkable aircraft, isn't it? it really is. Horizontal tail plane, and then the vertical stabiliser rudder. And then you've got supports underneath the one, two, three, four. Wow, there's actually four struts per side to support the tail. Gosh. Rigging. Oh, rigging. Just a word makes me shudder. I think there's a lot of stress and work. <laughs> I'm sure that anybody that's built wing nut wings will know exactly what I'm talking about. And I haven't actually built mine yet. It's, uh, it scares the hell out of me. <laughs> right, here we go, the engine. So we start with the crankcase. And it's a V12. Yeah, V12. Uh, looks, looks like a potent motor. There's two of them, obviously. Watford magnetos. 
to me this looks like a more advanced design of engine than, than Lost of World War One. Yeah, it's a V12, it's it's almost hints of Merlin here. <laughs> What's to come later? Then we've got the uh, carbine struts, carbine struts, engine bearers, and the engines of course will sit on the wings, so it's uh, it's gotta be very very strong. It's quite a lot of weight. I'm guessing the engine's probably a ton each, easy. And the crank starter handle. God, that's incredible. Water pipes for the cooling system. And then the positioning of the actual engines on the inner wing. It says the engine nacelle follows slightly differently from the F2 in that the engine bearers feature rooting and do not protrude beyond the rear struts. Obviously they've purified the design a little bit. And then we have the actual struts going in, complete with some electronic petrol pipes and electrical connectors. Bomb cable releases, and then more rigging. Ouch. <laughs> yes, that looks um, interesting. <laughs> then you, got put, you, you put your bottom wing on first, and then you build it up the struts, and then put the top wing on. This is going to be a lot of work, isn't it? This is going to take some time. But I bet it looks amazing. There we go. What have we got? Twin Lewis guns now. Double bow guns, this is for the chap at the front. And he's got a rotating, uh, elevating mounting. And then there's the top aft Lewis gun. It's covered in guns. Makes you wonder how it got shot down, really. And you've got some bombs, Mark 1, 230 pound bomb underneath. And then an altitude sight goes in at the front, next to the gunner. And then you've got your trestles to build for when it's on land. And beaching trolley. Oh yeah, so that's a complete trolley, that's a great system, isn't it? Because it's obviously a big, big, heavy aircraft. And here we go. So we've got these photos I, I mentioned, and there's actually a picture of it actually being strafed by the Brandenburg here. And you can see the bullet shots hitting the water. Wow! Good grief. Huh. They've been patrolling for a short while, having taken off from Great Yarmouth, and they saw two aircraft on the starboard bow, which they initially thought were DH-9 escort planes, but then they observed three more below them on the port side. Realising they were about to be attacked by five German W-29 seaplanes with superior performance, uh-oh, <laughs> not a good moment, he Mossop dived away at full throttle, reaching about 90... 90 new, sorry, 90 knots, about 166 kilometres an hour. What's that? About 110, 120 miles an hour. It's quite fast. The W29, the starboard so, came straight at them, killing pilot Private Dingley, sorry, who was manning the double bow guns with a shot through his neck. Crumbs. All five W29s now positioned themselves behind the Felix down, pressed down their attack with bullets whistling by and striking the hole with a crack, crack, crack. The gravity-fed tank in the centre section was soon riddled with holes and spraying petrol, which pumps could not replace quickly enough, leading to the engine slowing down and stopping. Oh dear. With the engine stopped, Mokop sets down on the water, whilst an unidentified W-29, probably not Christensen's, continues its attack. Mossop sent off a carrier pigeon to report their plight. <laughs> Fly me. And in the process, sending, sec sending a second while staff... When one sea staff will return attacking in line ahead formation. Mossop ordered the crew out onto the wingtips for safety, but the petrol tanks exploded into flames, and it is believed this was when Cooper was killed. Gosh. Oh my god. Suffering severe burns, Greenwood jumped into the sea by the bow, even though his life jacket was damaged and he couldn't swim. Ooh, crumbs. <clears throat> he of course sank and Mossop and Hodgson left a relative safety of their wingtip to rescue him. Mossop later described the burnt and drowning Greenwood as a little excitable but very brave. Oh my god, I'll say. In this photo, as <laughs> we can see Mossop and Hodgson swimming to the rescue of Greenwood on the end of the wingtip here. Just off the wingtip. Crazy. It's scary, isn't it? 
The Phoenix Tower was soon a blazing inferno. The fabric of the rear hull was almost completely burned away, no doubt helped by petrol spraying in all directions from the leaking gravity tank. While supporting Greenwood with the help of Hodgson, Mossop recalled seeing the observer of the last name machine stand up and take a photograph, which could well be that moment of the one below. The Felix Tower would shortly sink beneath the, sur the surface of the waves, leaving only a dangerous pool of burning petrol, which Mossop and Hodgson swam as fast as they could to get away while taking care of Greenwood. When they were at a safe distance, Hodgson discarded the issue flying helmet as it was not particularly helpful while trying to keep afloat in the sea, but Mossop kept hold of his head as he had paid for them himself. <laughs> he hung on to his because he bought them himself. They took turns in supporting Greenwood and drank brandy from Mossop's flask to keep their spirits up while they, until they were rescued by an HMS Halcyon. Approximately 35 minutes later, wow, they were lucky. That's incredible. This is astonishing. Oh my god. That's an incredible story. And they were delivered back to Yarmouth before midnight. That is absolutely astonishing. What a remarkable story. No wonder they wanted to make it into a, into a, a kit set. There you go. There's the finished product. Final rigging and turnbuckles in place. Oh, that looks like fun, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. Oh, it's helpful to have the uh, clear diagram now. And then finally, we have the markings and the colourings. Yeah. I'm not too sure about this. Um, these flaps on the end of the wings, the, um, the vertical struts. Seems a bit odd. Obviously, they needed it for stability of some sort. But, but if you look at this part of the aircraft, it certainly looks a bit like a Catalina, doesn't it? There you go. Wow! It's only one word I could think of, really. Let's have a look at the model then. Come out a little bit. And I'll tell you what they are first of all as we look at them and I'll try and get you focused in. So, starting with this one. It's the Hansa Brandenburg. It's the Germans. So, just come out. These are big sprues, so we're going to have to have it zoomed out a bit. So what we've got here, we've got the uh, instruments. We've got a uh, little tank, one of the fuel tanks, I think. I don't know the uh, maybe the water uh, water tank and control column wheel. And we've got the cockpit sides and pedals. And then, and then we've got the floats, and they are big, aren't they? They're huge. Very nice. Like, Boat. Uh, also, I've got sorry, the tailplanes as well. I'm skipping over too fast. Tailplanes here. Um, and oh, that's the tail itself. Okay, we've got three tails, three different versions. That's interesting. Now, why would that be? Must be a different version available of the kit. And wings. And here again, we have the. Uh, Hansa Brandenburg. So we've got these uh, again. We've got these sort of wings that are ribbed. And these huge, huge struts, um, which looks absolutely fabulous. So detailed. Hope the reflections are not causing a problem here. Let us kill some of the lights just to make it a little bit easier. Uh, Hansa Brandenburg again. So we've got the the crew uh, parts of the uh, fuselage where the crew pop out, and the sides of the floats. A bit closer, I think. And then. Got the wing, top of the wing, and the most unusual design, as we've spoken of, this uh, rudder, which sits beneath, like a, a boat, it sits beneath the fuselage, not on top. So it's a, 
it's, it really is a rudder in the, in the sort of ship sense. <laughs> and then we've got the uh, ailerons here. Nicely ribbed. And the wing is it's got some like a, str a stressed effect here in the wing as well. That's coming up on the camera, okay. Very, very nice. Nice ribbing. And the engine. It says, I'm trying to check if it is the engine. Rolls Royce Eagle. Nope, that's the one from the Felix Town. Hang on, this is where it's going to get complicated. Uh, that's the Benz, here we go. Benz engine, this is the right one. That's it. So we've got the sump here. Cylinders. And we've got three different types of prop there. All looking very, very crisp. Very, very nice. Beautiful. The Eagle, so that's getting mixed up now. So these parts are not Brandenburg, they are for. Here we go, Brandenburg, here we go. And we've got the wheels for the dolly and the trestles. And there's two of these sprues, identical. So, trestles, dolly wheels, very nice. Oh, we've got the guns as well, let's have a look at this. Let's get close. The guns, the guns. They look amazing. Look at that. Yeah, Spandau machine gun. Glorious. Um, okay, that's the Rolls Royce, so that's the Phoenix Stowe. <laughs> it's very tricky to get the right aircraft down in sequence. That is Phoenix Stowe. One thing that Wing Wings have done very cleverly though, they've actually got very faint etching uh, telling you which aircraft it is. So it actually at a glance, if it's faint, it's the Phoenix Stowe. And if it's very, very bold, deep, then that's the Brandenburg. Anyway, we'll just carry on. Otherwise, it will take too long. So, um, this is the Felix Stowe. So, we've got uh, one of the hatches here. And the crew, a couple of the hatches. That's the front one, the uh, the bow gun. Up top of the fuselage. And this is the, the rear position, or mid rear gun. Top of the fuselage again. And it's got this really stressed effect. Let's see if I can get that to pick up on the camera. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Very nice. Beautiful. Then we've got the uh, Eagle, Rolls Royce Eagle engine. This V12, which looks like a miniature Merlin or a prototype Merlin, you could say. <laughs> Big sprue, this. Mm. Very nice. Two of those, in fact, two identical ones. And then we've got the mother of all sprues, for which we must immediately go wide because it's that big. Can't never get it in. Look at that for a sprue! Holy crap! Holy moly, it's just enormous! So you've got the whole of the Felix Stowe side here. There's a, there's a piece that's wandering around here, but it doesn't appear to be off the sprue anyway. Oh, yes, it is, it's there. Okay. One of those seems to be off the sprue for some reason. It's the uh, cowling for the. It's the front, the top front of the, the bow, uh, just in front of where the gunner sits. And then we've got this um, under, underside piece for the uh, the dolly that it sits on. But just look at this beautiful moment. So much fine detail. If you're going to be able to uh, pick it up on the camera. Yeah, we should be able to. Let's just. Uh, Look at this. That's really nice. That's one of the biggest sprues I've seen for many, many years, I've got to say. Then we've got the uh, the front uh, clear parts. 
But look at the size of this. This is the front sort of canopy, if you like, in front of the pilot and navigator. It's absolutely huge. Looks lovely though. It's even got the rivets in the framework. Gorgeous. Now, now here's something I was looking forward to. Look at this spring. Oh, this is that um, parabellum. It looks like it's the. Uh, is it for both of them? Just one. Yeah, it's the parabellum sprue. Look at that. Okay, this we're going to go in close for. Look at these. Parabellum rifle. That's a hell of a gun. For World War One, especially. It's like a jacketed, like a jacketed Lewis gun there. It's a different version of it, I think. But I think there's different options for different kits uh, for other other aircraft and they obviously have one set Parabellum sprue because it says Parabellum not the name of the aircraft on the sprue itself but those are lovely so fine look at that get this absolutely superb and then we've got a little bit of Hansa Brandenburg uh, they're little, tiny clear parts with these tiny little uh, visor, sort of shield in front of the pilot. Then, big zoom out moment. There we go. Look at this. This is the Felix Stowe with this huge tail. Look at the tail. It's absolutely massive. Get this in. That is huge. It's a big old plane, isn't it? It's got these beautiful propellers. Just look at that. That's stellar. What a monster. And again, fine ribbing. It's like a ribbing and sort of stressed ribbing effect. Looks very nice. And another massive one. God, these are some of the big, biggest sprues I've ever seen, I think. It seems to have a tear in the bag on this one. I think it's just, yeah, it's because it's got a sharp edge on the sprue. It's obviously ripped its way through in transit. Uh, won't worry about that. <coughs> but look at that. This is the wing. This is the top wing. I think it is. No, the bottom wing, because it's got struts on top. But look at the detail of these struts. Where the strut point is, look at this. Look at that. It's got these sort of uh, holes where it's actually bolted in around the strut. That's amazing. That's a massive strut, look at this section here. Fabulous Melbourne, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. Now we have the uh, the top of the wing. Probably the biggest sprue in the kit. Jeez, look at the size of this. I can't, I can't, no, I can't fit in. It doesn't matter. <laughs> That's the top of the wing. This is an enormous model. If you build this, how big is this kit then? So that's got to be 18 inches per wing. So that's three feet, isn't it? Three feet. Three foot wingspan, the kit we're talking about. It's a monster. Fill this, fill this table, it will, pretty much. Almost. That's big. What a monster. And again, it's got the beautiful ribbing. Very, very finely moulded. And we've got the tail section and the floats again pretty big and that's putting it mildly <laughs> huge but look at this this tail section again it's a bit like the uh, Janine Staltaub that we reviewed recently it's this very gossamer thin uh, section with the, the ribbing through and they've replicated that in plastic so wonderfully I don't know if you can actually see through, 
should see the light through it in the ribbing. Remarkable. Absolutely fabulous. Now we've got some real got detail sprues with God, there's so much on the sprue. I think there's no point in zooming out because so I just have to zoom in again. So we'll just go around the sprue in bits at a time. So we've got the uh, propeller. This looks very nice. Lovely twist to it. And we have the struts, tail planes. Oh, it's, the, it's the rudder, I think, actually. Is it the rudder? This one, I think so. We've got bombs. When we're bombing the um, U boats or whatever. Yep. We've got the uh, radiators for the engines. Such a lot of fine detail, it's incredible. And then we have that, that is replicated, that uh, sprue, repeated. And then finally, last sprue. This would take you months and months and months to go on, wouldn't it? To do it nicely. For me, this would probably be a six month, nine month project, possibly. At least six months. So they build quite slowly and very, very finely, you might say. It's not a quick process there, that's for sure. Sides of the, uh, the framework for the sides of the cockpit and monocoque, fuse large, I should say. Got instrumentation here. So much fine parts. There's wires, there's electric. Oh, it's <clears throat> look at that. That's the electrics and the fuel lines. <coughs> Excuse me. Electrics and fuel lines attached to the struts. Incredible. Let's let this start if you. And then last but not least, the huge, and it is huge, decal sheet. Absolutely massive. And on the other side, we've got some sort of support here for the, uh, like a strut for the uh, wing, uh, wing spar. It looks like it might be carbon fibre or metal, that. I think it's metal. And we have, of course, we have the... Uh, PE photo etch fret. Now that strut wants to get in on the action, doesn't it? There we go. How's that? <laughs> Gosh, that's impressive. It's got the pilot's uh, belts here. Big, big straps, aren't they? Fantastic. Put that back at the bottom to make sure that we keep it preserved as much as we can. Says so, it's quite hard to get it out. They've made the box only just big enough. There's no excess room in this box. Right, I'll just, uh... <coughs> I won't put them all away because I'll be here all day. So, what we got then? Mind blowing, isn't it? That's got to be one of the best things they've ever produced, and they produce some amazing stuff. So that's quite a compliment, I think. Um, let's get the, let's get the box back so we can just remind ourselves of the artwork and how wonderful it is. Do you want it? You want one, sir? Oh, madam. Um, there's a problem. I've been doing a bit of research on the internet and looking at the values of these things and uh, these are quite rare in the UK, it's almost impossible to get this. This is two kits, so if you actually buy this kit, you can get this kit I saw I think on eBay this morning. And it was two, I'm not gonna, no easy way to break this to you, it was £240 I think it was. Just this aeroplane only, not this one, just this one. 
But there was someone in Germany selling this set for £226, which seems a bargain, and there was only one, and that was the only one I could find anywhere of the set. So that'll be gone. In America, oops, careful. In America, somebody was selling the Felix Stowe, and he wanted £400 for it. And it was £55 carriage to the UK, so £455. So if you bought them separately, if you don't get the German one quick, which you probably won't be quick enough, you bought them separately then, it's not quite the same as the collector's item that this is, but that would cost you £700? £700. I think that at the moment, and this is a moving target which will just keep going up, I think this is 500 quid worth here. At the moment, I think you could put that on the market £500 and I think you'd probably sell it in the UK. They are very, very desirable um, for obvious reasons. Two obvious reasons. One, the quality, which is indisputable. And two, the rarity. Um, what, what other option do you have if you really wanted one of these now? Uh, you're going to have to pay through the nose. The problem is that it's going to make people reluctant to, to build them. Uh, I'd be reluctant to build this particular one because of its sheer size. It's a behemoth of a model. The Felix though is just enormous. That's massive. I mean, it's no wonder they shot it to pieces because they couldn't really miss it, could they? But anyway, in summary, one of the finest kits I've ever seen. Bar none, you know. The only thing that could have topped that would have probably been the Lancaster, and that's not going to happen now, so there you go. Um, just beautiful model engineering at its finest. So I'm going to very carefully repack this now and send it back to its owner. I uh, hope he enjoys the video. I hope you all enjoyed the video too. Uh, thanks for joining me. Um, if you get a chance of a wing that wings kit at a sensible price, you should probably take it immediately and don't hesitate. Because very soon you're just not going to be able to get these unless you, you know, sell it, remove a kidney and sell it, or sell one of your children or something. <laughs> or maybe put your house on the market. But anyway. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but only slightly, because they're getting crazy money. Um, but beautiful things, you know, that, that suddenly are not available will always do that. But um, keep your eye on the market, because it's only going in one direction, that's up. Anyway, a wonderful, wonderful model kit, two kits. Um, best of the best, really, isn't it? So there we go, 10 out of 10. Thanks for joining me. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. There'll be more videos coming in the not-too-distant future. And it uh, just suffices for me to say in the meantime, take care of yourselves, thanks a lot, and bye for now. Cheers now, bye bye.